Hi everyone and welcome to Funding a Better Future, a new series of bite-sized episodes featuring expert insights from climate tech investors. My name is Cherry Swain and I'm the founder of Above and Beyond Recruitment. We partner with climate tech startups and we help them to scale and grow, either by recruiting for them and helping them build out teams or by offering talent advisory and consulting services. This series is aimed at founders and leaders of climate tech businesses, and specifically to anyone who's looking to raise investment this year. We aim throughout this series to give you a realistic picture of the current investment market, as well as some tips to give you the best chances of fundraising success, and hopefully a network of individuals that you can approach when the time is right. Today, for our very first episode, we are joined by Matt Ward. Matt is the founding partner of Forward VC, a climate accelerator and investment syndicate for early stage climate startups. He's also built the excellent Climate VC Crew Slack community, which provides an ecosystem of support to those startups and also hosts the Startup Tank, which is a platform where startup founders can pitch climate VCs. So a very busy man. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Cherry. I'm not, uh, I'm not great at relaxing. <laughs> That's fine. No worries at all. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to kick off, Matt? But for those who don't know you and don't know about Forward, do you want to just give us a brief intro in, in a few more words than I did as to, as to what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So we launched Forward VC, uh, number four Ward VC. We invest in companies that move the world forward about a year ago, a little bit longer as a climate syndicate. We built up to 190 LPs. We started to do some deals. And the big challenge that we had was running a syndicate is a bit like herding cats to cat food. Even when there's incredible climate companies we want to invest in, LPs don't necessarily show up. Maybe they're busy, don't get the email, divorced, Putin invades Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera. There were so many issues and so many great companies that we were seeing through the startup tank, which is our Shark Tank or Dragon Stand for climate companies. We do that every month, uh, every Monday, every other Monday at the startuptank.com. But we were seeing all of these great companies and wanting to invest in them. And that's where the that's where the accelerator kind of came in into play. So we call it the partner in crime program, and we invest in one to two climate companies per month, pre-seed and seed Europe, North America, and Israel, with the goal being you've got your traditional VCs and they tell you they're founder friendly. And then they'll write a check and maybe make an intro or two and then do some board meetings. And that's that's about that. Or there's accelerators where, well, we've got three cohorts a year. Sorry, you missed the deadline. So in four months, apply again. And don't worry, you'll be with 30, 40, 50 other companies, which means we care like two to three or 4% about your company. They were indexing the market and we saw so many companies going through multiple accelerators, not having traction, not having pilots, still trying to raise funding and figured there's got to be a better way to do this. So that's where the partner in crime, so to speak, came in. We decided Let's do things completely differently, reinvent this whole big cohort model and go evergreen of investing in companies constantly when they come to us and then using our connections and network. I basically spent the last year connecting with everybody, something like 1,300 plus funds, incubators, accelerators, and CVCs, which you can find that all as a, as a database on our website, just forward.vc slash VC database. You can filter by stage, sector, geography, and check size. We make intros to investors. We make intros to dozens to hundreds of corporates with the goal being let's land two to five new major pilots, customers, some serious traction. Because for climate companies especially, the biggest challenge they have is getting those first initial customers, those first successful pilots, so they can go from TRL small number to TRL big number and having uh, corporates really be interested because it needs those proof points in those case studies. Once they've got that, the funding comes, the, the corporates and um, clients come, the investors come. But they had so much trouble in that early stages. And that's why we decided, screw it, let's do it. Uh, partner in crime. We're here 100% with you. I love that. So supporting them all the way through then through the startup tank from those initial pitches uh, right through to actually getting the investment, investing in them and then supporting them in their kind of winning customers and, and building their businesses. Brilliant. I love that. Sort of, but in the opposite order, because so many companies right. think the the pitching and the investment is the important part. And so many accelerators focus on that. And we say, screw it. That's stupid. Go. Let's get customers. Let's get traction. The investors will come. So we focus, we have 170 mentors on board, not your traditional mentors of you're paired with a mentor and they're going to give you help and advice kind of thing, but high ups at CVCs, VCs, uh, corporates, 
energy agencies like DOE, Porsche, Honda, Lufthansa, HSBC, Barclays, uh, JetBlue. Uh, basically, we tried to get folks across the spectrum so that they're too busy to really be hands-on with companies, but they have incredible networks and they're looking either to invest in these companies or make intros to their portfolio companies or connect to their LPs or connect to energy providers or in general help their network and promote the space as well because this is what their job is. So we help them do that. They work with us, see the companies we're working with, make introductions where relevant and our goal is. You might not have one mentor hands-on other than yours truly because I'm your partner in crime, but you might have 10 or 15 mentors making two, three, four introductions a piece. Those numbers really add up. We call it networked growth hacking where we essentially use our network to hack the growth of our companies. Amazing. I love that. Perfect. And I mean, amongst the founders that I speak to, there's quite a lot of trepidation about the fundraising landscape for this year um, and how easy it's going to be for them to secure funding. I mean, in, in your opinion, you've got a really broad view of the market. What, what's your opinion of the funding landscape this year for climate tech? I would say easy is the wrong word. Um, it certainly hasn't been hit as hard as other areas of uh, the startup landscape, primarily because while well, certain things kind of go out the window and or become less relevant. Climate change is something that only becomes more relevant every passing day. So there is still funding here. There is as well a lot more funding coming into play as governments, carbon credits and taxes, uh, large LPs, corporates, all start to really get serious about putting money in. That, that said, a lot of that is later stages. And that's where we why we think the opportunity is in the early stages. And that's why we kind of run this partner in crime program because it's not about attracting investors per se. It's about getting real traction, real customers, real sales, so that you don't necessarily have to have the investors. They come to you mm -hmm. once you have things working. But when you go to them, it's much harder. And there is so much competition chasing after chasing after the money. You really need to be, you really need to be something special. Now that said, while we are living in a valley of death and doom. When it comes to startup funding, the companies that can survive the next two, three, four, five years, all the rest of the competition is going to die. And they'll be at, in the position, especially the climate companies, because there is so much more money coming into the space, so much more in the terms of regulations push. So like the IRA tax credits and tax credits pretty much everywhere across the, across the globe. There will be almost unlimited dumb money to grow and scale for the climate companies that can make it through these next couple of years of the, the trough, so to speak. So what I recommend to, to founders is, yes, it's hard out there. It's tough. I think you need to be reaching out to at least 100 VCs, getting cold, uh, getting warm introductions where you can. That's kind of part of what we do with our accelerator. But find a way to get a warm intro because it's worth 100 cold outreaches. If you can't do it, then make sure you hustle and put some personalization in there. Raise more money than you think you need because the economy, well, it doesn't look good now. It could look much worse in six months. So you don't really know. You don't want to have to rely on it. And because things are taking longer, having that extra runway gives you the opportunity to really get further and have enough significant traction to raise whatever that next round is. If you've already raised money in the past, I recommend not taking the valuations of previously all that seriously, there is a good chance you're going to have to do a down round or a flat round. And that just is the, that just is the situation. If you look at public market companies and comps, they're down like 60 to 80%. Well, it's not that unreasonable for your valuations to be down like 60 to 80%, because if you're going to get acquired or IPO, et cetera, you're going to do that for about 60 to 80% less. So that means uh, it makes things a lot more challenging uh, definitely be opportunistic when it comes to getting money into the into the company, having the runway and allowing yourself to continue. Because in hard times, while everyone else is dying, if you can just survive, stay in place or move forward relative to your competition, that means you're winning. And, and what parts of the sector would you say you're kind of most excited about this year? Mm -hmm. Are there parts of climate tech that you think are kind of going to win out in 2023? Yeah, so absolutely. So first of all, for us, we're a big fan of painkillers and not vitamins. So carbon accounting and carbon marketplaces, um, I might get some flack for this, but that's not something that we're really interested in <clears throat> because those feel more like software companies pretending to be climate or they feel like nice to haves. People know how to lose weight and be healthy and yet 30 to 40% of America is obese. 
And sometimes you have to force things to get better. You can't rely on the better nature and rely on action. So things that we're most interested about are really decarbonizing the large, dirty, unsexy industries. So construction, uh, waste management, circular economy, transportation has been very hot and probably overdone, but some of the, some of the other kind of facilitating aspects there, food and agriculture find to be, uh, to be fascinating, less so on the plant-based meats. There's way too much competition and it's kind of a race to the bottom consumer branding type business model. We look for things where there's a massive, I, I like the three T models, team TAM timing. So TAM billions, multi-billions and either exploding in growth. So really fast year over year growth. Or the other area, which we talked about a little bit before, it could just be enormous, possibly even declining, but it's old uh, and outdated and ripe for disruption. Timing, why now, but not two or three years ago? So certain things, I know AI and uh, ChatGPT3 is all the hype these days. I think some of that will pan out. I think a lot of that will also pan into hype because that's kind of the the nature of things uh, that get really excited and hot. Not big on blockchain solutions that we're seeing because generally most of the blockchain solutions we're seeing are either scammy or overly idealistic, uh, neither of which have a great possibility to grow and scale. Um, uh, and then uh, team. So more than anything else, more than sector, more than um, business model, we look for a team. What about this team is absolutely effing world class. And in, in venture, you have winners and you have everyone else. And we're looking for the folks where you would bet on them basically regardless of what they're doing. If it was running a marathon, a fight, a game of Monopoly, an eating contest, they worked three jobs while in college, they were a refugee, they were an extreme athlete. Something about them is just world world class. They can attract the right type of people and they've got the they've got the the missionary, not the mercenary approach to what they're doing. For them, this is an obsession not an opportunity as a business. Perfect. I love that. I like the painkillers, not vitamins, and the mm -hmm. time jam team. Perfect. Um, cool. And what advice, I mean, you gave a little bit of advice earlier for founders there in, in get out there, network, connect with as many VCs as you can. But what other advice would you give to founders? What can they be focusing on and addressing within their business today to get them fit for going and raising funding? Sales, sales, sales. Build your pipeline, get LOIs, get customers, get revenue. Focus on building a business, not building an investment case. Because if you have a business, the investment case is obvious. And if you're trying to make a sexy investment case, it means you're not spending enough time on the business itself. So I would say, and what we recommend and focus on with our accelerator and all the companies we work with is just get the heck out there and sell that Sell the shit out of what you're doing. Even if that's just LOIs, letters of intent, uh, interest, um, kind of getting corporates to agree. Oh, we, we will do this pilot if X, Y, Z, or they're out in the future. Showing those proof points and showing that you can do that. That's how you get traction with investors. Not having a pretty pitch deck. It's really about executing. Yeah, I like that. Very good. And I think people get caught up in the story and the narrative and the pitch deck and and not in the less sexy side of it, which is like you said, get up, get out there and sell it. So yeah, really and useful. And don't let the ego get away in the way with valuations and such. A lot of times founders, that would be the other thing I would add. Let's say you've raised a round already. You've done a pre-seed or a seed. You did it at 10 million, 50 million, et cetera. Don't feel the need to have a bigger valuation, but shittier terms. So there, there's like two, two times preference, three times preference, other really dangerous things that can come into place where sure you might make it look all nice and pretty and you got the valuation you wanted and yay to write home. But if your VCs are getting paid out like two, three, four times before of the, whatever the money they put in, it's a good chance when you exit, you're not going to see a dime. So don't only think about the actual dilution and valuation numbers. Also think about the the preference stack. Otherwise, you'll find yourself very quickly, unless you have an enormously massive outcome, which you can't bank on having an enormously massive outcome, you'll set yourself up for, for failure because, well, you'll be the last one to eat at the table and mm -hmm. all the food will be gone. Good. Um, and 
what are you most excited about for your own ventures and your own business this year? What, what have you got going on? What do you want to share with us? Yeah, I will share everything I can. So yeah. <laughs> with our with our accelerator, we've got four awesome companies in the program, another four that are lined up to start in the next couple of weeks slash months. And we, we run that in a evergreen type model. So great companies come to us. We start, roll and uh, scale things up. I can't say what the business model behind that is because of compliance reasons, but we're running an accelerator. So you can read between the lines of what that means and how we, uh, how we operate. And that's where I'm most excited because I think we have the opportunity to really disrupt the space. Like, like we said right earlier, there were VCs that were kind of being helpful and really just being cash. And there were accelerators that were kind of just indexing the market and being a little bit helpful. And we're really reinventing that with uh, the, the most hands-on, um, accelerator slash VC that, uh, that you can kind of, that you can kind of hope for alongside that things are going well with the startup tank. Initially, it was me asking startups to do a favor and come on the show. And now when companies pitch, they're getting five or 10 VCs reaching out cold, asking, up, asking to, to set up intros and meetings. So now there's, there's some positive motion on that. The Slack community and things are going well. We, basically, my model behind Forward VC and everything we've done is open sourcing and being as helpful as possible, building up karma, sharing deals and creating the network so that we're kind of at the synthesis of all of these different mycelium network or root network or climate networks, et cetera, with the hope being a rising tide lifts all boats. And if we help other people move forward, eventually it comes around. And that's kind of what I'm excited about for this year. And ultimately getting the the accelerator and the the business model I can't talk about entirely up to the certain size and scale so that I can afford to pay myself for doing this. That would be nice too. Perfect. Lovely. And I like that a rising tide lifts us all. It really does. Um, Perfect. And if people want to get in touch with you and get involved in the accelerator, how can they do that? So the best place is on our, on our website. So just forward.vc, the number forward.vc, we invest in companies that move the world forward. There you'll find more about our 12 week accelerator program. If you think you're up for it and ready to really grow and scale on a kind of super steroid basis, uh, be sure to apply. We take uh, pre-seed and seed companies for the startup tank. You can find all the information there as well or at the startuptank.com. We do that every two weeks, uh, 5 p.m. CET Mondays. You can apply there pre-seed to pre-series A just at the startuptank.com. And on our website, we have our climate uh, our climate investor and our climate founder Slack communities where you can sign up as well as our climate VC database. 950 funds, incubators, accelerators, and CVCs. You can filter by stage, sector, geography, and check size. It was a lot of cold outreach and a lot of um, info building, but it'll help you with finding your ideal climate investor. So hopefully you find that helpful. Forward.vc slash VC database. Superb. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your insights on the fundraising landscape for this year. Hopefully that will be really useful to the founders that are out there watching and listening to this. Um, This is a whole series of episodes that we've got coming up for you over the next few weeks. Um, We'll be coming to you every Wednesday lunchtime and every Friday lunchtime for I think the next five or six weeks. And we've got some fantastic people also coming to share their insights with you as well. Um, next episode up this Friday coming is Nadav Steinmetz from Nomia. Um, so same time, 12.30, um, come and join us. Matt, once again, thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, small world. Nadav's actually on our uh, investment committee. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's a small world after all. Isn't thanks, it? <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on, Cherry. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you found this helpful. Bye. Mm-hmm.